I love open world games. I love exploration. I love looting treasure. I love going to worn out places, meeting new people, seeing new races, and all their funny faces. I love going on little simulated road trips with all sorts of stops and distractions. I love defeating things, collecting resources, crafting, cooking, and making things from aforementioned defeated things. But I think the very most important mechanic or gameplay aspect of an open world would have to be environmental interaction. You can be given these amazing, massive, expansive worlds to go absolutely nuts in, but if there's no environmental interaction, I feel as though the whole concept of an open world falls short, almost missing the whole point in a way by putting the cart before the horse. Level design is the grounding force for games. I don't need to tell you that. A level literally sets the stage and context for whatever is going to happen in a game. What would Mario do if he had no platforms and power-ups to Bing Bing and Wahoo? Where would Sonic be without tracks, hoops, and loops to gotta go fast through? Level design orients the way we play games, and when you've got a large open world, a mechanic like environmental interaction becomes vital to gameplay, or otherwise you've just got a flat featureless field, where the only thing keeping you from getting to point A and point B is... Maybe some hills, a bit of grass, a little pond, the staff, same hazards you'd find in a golf course. I'm reminded of the saying, it's not the destination, but the journey. And I think that's a good phrase to take to heart when making an open world game, and the difference meaningful environmental interaction can have in one. So with that in mind, let's destinate ourselves some examples so I can hopefully journey my opinion into you. The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt has been awarded Game of the Year for the past five years, and this is impressive considering it's only been out since 2015. It's considered one of the greatest games of all time! And I've personally clocked in 191 hours on the game, and its various expansions. I love The Witcher 3, but if I had to bully it, it's got weak environmental interaction. And I say that with love. Not for Roach, though. So what can you do with your environment in Witcher 3? GAME OF THE CENTURY EDITION! Well, you can collect herbs that are found growing in in-game environmental conditions that would correspond with their species and whatnot. Likewise, you can also hunt monsters much the same way, with the fishmen being in the wetland, mistmen being in the Stephen King land, and wyverns and various burbs and or borbs being in the worst, most absolutely precarious places you would want to encounter a 2,500 pound flying reptile. Meanwhile, all the giants loiter around abandoned towers, all with convenient horse access. Though, Roach is a filthy coward and jousting is not a viable strategy, much to the disappointment of all Don Quixote's descendants. That said, it's kind of unfortunate really, because the game's environment only ever really shines in scripted moments. When you're on a quest or taking up a bounty, you get to follow clues, talk to people, sniff things, root around in the dirt a little, and then follow a stinky glowing path to some horrid beast. Quite immersive, really. But when you're out on your own, these features never really pop up, like, ever. Encounters become less about hunting and more about, oh, hello, hello. I see a monster, I do. I'm gonna go end it, I am, I am. <laughs> Both times, the environment doesn't really live up to its full potential. In scripted moments, it simply doesn't matter. You could have something like that in a sectioned off world just fine. The open world doesn't contribute anything meaningful besides making you think your playground is bigger than it actually is. Whereas in an unscripted, uh, it... It, there really isn't any discipline or tracking. The world and its features are simply setting pieces. I think one of the best open world encounters the game has to offer is the Leshen. The Leshen is a great wooden bugaboo that's as flammable as it is dangerous, turning into crows, summoning roots and wolves, and clawing your face off. It utilizes what I'd consider to be thematically appropriate abilities to pair up with its supernatural spookiness and the already eerie environment you usually find it in to create a memorable and immersive encounter. But it's an illusion. 
It's the illusion of depth. Don't expect the Leshen to become upset if you flip off some trees or fart on some ferns. It's Leshened to a spot, and it'll fight you when you come to it. It's a static encounter. Which is all rather ironic, because a fenced-in game like Monster Hunter World takes far more advantage of its sectioned-off environment than Witcher 3 does. And if you're still here after hearing such an offensive comparison, let me go on to tell you very briefly why I think MHW is a better open-world game, despite not being one. And it has everything to do with the environment being put front and center. See some vines? You can swing from them. Monsters can get tangled up in them. And some of them conveniently hold rock traps. Made from only the freshest organically grown and locally sourced rocks. See that barrier? You can destroy it, releasing a waterfall to drown out this big dumb lizard and his entire unborn family. See that dumb egg burb? He's gonna hit you with a dang old rock he gathered himself, and you're not gonna remember math good no more. See that toad? That toad is a member of an elite-trained, anti-bullying force of amphibians, and is poised to release a cloud of toxic gas if it even experiences so much as a single microaggression from any living organism. See that monster over there? She's got stuff to do. You're not the center of her world. You're just a tourist. A distraction. She isn't making all these tracks and markings just to make your life easier. She's doing it to keep up appearances. This is a Rathian neighborhood. Nature. MH World's environment abounds with nature and natural environmental interactions. And even if they all take place in a small, mapped out, Baby Goo Goo Gaga enclosure, it's still more of a dynamic, breathing, and believable world than what we typically get. The depth isn't fake, it's real, it's quantifiable. I've got my open world anometer here, and it says it's good, it's off the charts. I gotta throw it away because it's overheating. I need to blow on it. Why? You could even say, I need a... Breath of the Wild! Of course I'm going to mention Breath of the Wild. I see a game like Breath of the Wild, and I would be doing it and you a disservice to not acknowledge the fact that it's set out to recreate the feel and theme of the first Legend of Zelda. One of the very first open world games. While still following modern open world gaming mechanics. It's taken a lot of notes and copied wholesale a lot of other concepts from other games, given the Far Cry towers you've got to capture, but I think it does them consistently better. This game just has so much respect for its environment and the meaningful ways you can interact with the large open world that's presented to you. You can cut down trees to make logs. The logs then can be pushed down hills to squish enemies, used to float across water to walk in, pushed over a gap to make a bridge, or just cut up into timber, because man brings fire. But it doesn't just end there. Your arrows can get stuck in wood, and then you can just pull them out again to reuse them. Furthermore, you're not even the only entity in the game that can take advantage of this. The big cussing Hinox Ogre can pick up trees and mash your gorgeous dumb face with them. I seen him do it! And that's just the trees! That's just the trees! Your movement is slowed down by snow in the sand because you're sinking in it. Link's little body can get hot or cold. And by that I mean hotter than it already is, am I right? <laughs> there is fruit physics! This game puts more effort into how a durian reacts with its environment than other games do with how bullets rooty, tooty, and or shooty. Never mind the variety of environments, both in terms of geography, biosphere, weather patterns, and the natural satisfying progression of traversing these lands from one biome to another, whether you be on a foot or on a horseback. The world in an open world ultimately needs to be its own fully realized character capable of responding to the player in methodical and intimate ways, even if that means making the world smaller. You need to understand that in an open world, space alone doesn't make gameplay. 
its interactions and natural responses to the player's actions, does. That's the gameplay. For you see, you could make an entire universe of content. But if there's nothing to do, interaction is shallow, and the environment bland, stagnant, and unresponsive, why, no man would enjoy that.